Hey guys, today we're looking into should you buy a motorized bike? Enjoy the video. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you hit that like button and please subscribe. So there's gonna be multiple factors playing into should you buy a motorized bike, but for the right person, you'll find out. So if you're looking into motorcycles or dirt bikes or something like that and you're realizing the prices are a little bit over the top and you're looking for something just to have fun on, bomb around, maybe some dirt roads just to have a little bit of fun with, we're gonna look into should you buy one of these motorized bikes. So the first thing to know is if you do have a bike that will fit a motor, so check the dimensions online, whatever motor you're getting, they have different dimensions that they're gonna need for space to put it on your bike. If you do have the bike that will fit a motor, that's gonna play a huge factor in because if you're having to buy the bike, it's gonna bring the price way up. So if you're that lucky person with the bike that's gonna fit the motor, it's gonna bring the price way down for having to go and buy a bike that will actually fit one. So I think a lot of people in their lifetime, especially if you live like out in the country, have been at one point like, I wanna take a weed whacker engine, stick it on my bike, and make it into a motorized bike, especially when you're younger, like a kid. So a lot of people who have said this haven't really accomplished it. There's probably only a few people that actually made those motorized bikes out of the weed whacker or the chainsaw, and you've ripped apart these chainsaws, wasted them, and now we have the possibility to make these really cheaply. So we now have this new option to build these lightweight, cheap, easy to work on machines that are super fun. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be talking about is size. So size is gonna be a huge factor with these bikes. So if you're taller or you weigh more, it's not gonna be as good of a thing for you since these motorized bikes aren't the most powerful things in the world. So these are little 80cc China CC or 66 US CC engines. So they don't have a ton of power, although they do do a good job pulling you along and do a good job, they don't have the best power in the world. If you're a four-wheeler or a snowmobiler, you're probably thinking, yeah, that's really small because most four-wheelers four or snowmobiles are six, seven, 800 cc. So size is gonna play a huge factor. So I'd stay around the 100 to 200 pound range is where you're gonna stay. And then after 200 pounds, you're probably looking at maybe getting a bigger engine or something because you don't want to overdo the bike but you also don't want to be underweight where you can't handle the bike. So if you're a young kid or something that wants a motorized bike, you should stay away from them for a couple more years until you're big enough and old enough to be able to handle it. So the second thing I'm going to be talking about is skill. So skill is going to play a huge factor into all this. Probably a lot of you guys who are watching this motorized bike video don't have much skill to motorize bikes and that's why you're wondering if you should buy one or not. So this is gonna play a huge factor and weigh on if you should buy one or not. So I'm 16, I was one of those people that bought a motorized bike last spring and started playing around with it, breaking things, all sorts of different stuff, whole learning experience for a long time. And I really wouldn't recommend going through that whole learning experience. It's great to learn about these things and you will learn through the whole process of buying these things on how to work on it, do this, all this kind of stuff. But I recommend you go online, find a couple videos, how to build them, how to work on them, how to put them together, that kind of thing, because the whole learning experience can actually waste a little bit more money than you want to on replacing parts because you didn't put it together right or something breaks just because you aren't good enough. So when these kits come, they can come pretty much all broken apart. Basically the cylinder and the head are all taken off and it's kind of a pain to put together. This one did come like that from gasbike.net. So if you don't have any experience putting those together, you don't know what an engine really, how it works or anything like that, you don't know how to put it together, I recommend what, either watching some videos or hiring somebody to put it together for you because if you put it together wrong, it's gonna cost you more money to buy more parts. So it may be worth it to either hire it out or wait a little bit by watching videos. So not only just the engine is hard to put together, which some companies do send it fully put together, except for the bike isn't put together which is still kind of a pain. There's a lot to learn throughout that. You know, getting the sprocket all put on right, that's a huge factor, your chain can be ripped. All these different things that, that aren't the easiest to put together because there's no directions that come with it. So make sure you watch videos, you have enough skill to be able to put one of these together because it is actually kind of a tricky job. Next up, number three, we're gonna be talking about what are you looking for? So there's gonna be multiple different bikes and I'm not pointing this video at any two stroke bike or anything like that. We've got two stroke, four stroke, we got big, small, and we can have all these different kinds of bikes that we can look into. We can have the different style bike, and this is gonna all play into what kind of bike you like to ride and a couple other things. So first we're gonna look into the engine. What type of engine do you want? Do you want two stroke engine or four stroke engine? Four stroke engines have a couple cons and a couple pros. The first pro to a four stroke engine is they burn a lot cleaner. A four stroke engine is gonna let out a lot less exhaust since it doesn't burn any oil mixed in with the gas, which is a lot cleaner. But from what I know from experience, although I don't have a four stroke motorized bike, they're gonna be a lot slower, they don't have as many horsepower, but they also are a lot quieter. Whereas a two stroke engine is gonna be burned a little bit dirtier, it's gonna be a little grosser to ride, it can make you smell, that kind of thing. 
but it is also is a little bit faster and a lot of people do like a little more noise to make them look cooler and have more fun with it so two stroke engines are what people are going to be leaning for also four stroke engines are going to be a little bit more expensive a little bit bulkier weigh a little bit more all right so now you have to decide if you want a big or a small engine big ones obviously are going to go a little bit faster probably be a little bit louder a little bit bulkier they make a 212 cc engine i think that's a four stroke though and then they also make the 66 cc they also make a 50 cc so you really have to decide which engine you want it's going to play into factor again with the four strokes it's going to be quieter but it also is going to be a little bit slower and the two strokes are going to be a little bit faster so if you're looking into the 212 cc four stroke it's going to have a little bit more power than the 66 cc two stroke so yeah the two strokes definitely have a lot more power they're going to burn a little bit dirtier but you got to decide that and also like the 212 cc engines are going to cost a lot more obviously than the 66 cc engine so size and four stroke versus two stroke is going to make a difference all right so next we're going to look into what can motorized bikes do all right so motorized bikes can actually do a lot they're cheap and they're lightweight and they're easy to work on so we're going to look into like what are you looking for what can these things do for you so these motorized bikes like the 66 cc that i've been using max out around 15 to 20 miles an hour maybe up to 25 if you're lucky they all come in different sizes and shapes because they don't come off the factory line perfectly so it's really going to depend what engine you get how smooth the ports are on it and it's going to depend on the speed but they're not very fast and they're also not the best at going uphill so you're looking at something that's really small so if you're looking at a dirt bike you're probably going to be looking at something that's 250 cc's at least maybe even bigger that's something that could really pump you up a hill and gear the right way. These things are not the fastest things, as you can see, 15 to 20 miles an hour. And they also don't pull up hills very well. Also, it really depends what you're looking for. You can't be popping wheelies on this thing very easily. You probably could, but it wouldn't be the easiest thing to do. So if you're looking for something that can pop wheelies, go fast, bring you up hills really easily, these probably aren't the things for you, and you should save up until you can get the bigger bike, like the motorcycle or the dirt bike. All right, so next here, we're just going to look at something else that'll play a huge factor into it. So we talked about size, and that was like a big thing, because these things aren't the most powerful things. Then we also looked into like the speeds were really slow. But don't get too, too discouraged by this, because over the summer, last summer, and this summer I'll be working on different mods. So mods are something that are super easy to do on these bikes. In my last video gave you five tips that made your motorized bike go faster. So you can do tons of different things to these engines, to the bike itself, to the chain, to make these things go so much faster. So you can actually get these bikes up to about 50 miles an hour if you can get them going faster uh, with different mods in different parts. You also may be able to get them even going faster than that if you put the right parts and time into it. So if you know how to work on an engine and buy the right parts for these machines, then you're good to go. You should be able to mod these things to its maximum and get them going crazy fast and also get them going up hills super well. All right, so real quick, we're just gonna look into some of the parts and I'm gonna tell you which ones are gonna have to be replaced, if they're cheap, if they last a while, what you're gonna have to do. So it's gonna play a factor into Am I going to have to buy this part multiple times from the same company? It's going to add up to be so much money. It's not going to be worth it. I'm also going to look into like what's going to break on you so you know how to fix it and that kind of thing. So number one we're going to be looking at is the chain. So the chain is the number one part probably that's going to break the most out of anything on this bike. So if you can't get the chain set perfectly right, and that's one of those things where you need to have the right mechanical skill to put these chains on perfectly so they don't come off, break, that kind of thing, because these things do break a lot, and they're not the easiest things because they're heavier chains like motorcycle or dirt bike chains that aren't gonna be exactly the easiest thing to fix. So chains are about $12, I think, or something like that, so they're not terribly expensive, but it is probably a part that you're probably gonna have to change twice or so because over time it's just gonna break unless you get that sprocket perfectly straight and perfectly on which you can do. So the second part I would think about is the tire. So over time, the bike tires, which are meant for pedaling, are being run off a motor. It's a little bit harder on it. Over time, these bikes' tires are probably gonna wear out. We've had a few that have bent and just not worked anymore. So played into a factor, you may have to buy a new bike tire, or if you buy the Magnum tires, it's gonna be better because they're stronger and they'll hold up a lot better. So play in a factor that you're probably gonna have to pay for something like that. So another thing that's probably gonna break on you at some point is the exhaust. So the exhaust can break, especially if you're modding it yourself and not modding it right, the right way. Over time, it can rattle off and break. I've had a few break myself and that was part of the learning experience. Uh, they can also rattle out because the bolts they give you need to have some Loctite on them or something to hold them in a little better than 
what they give you. So yeah, exhaust is gonna be something that's probably gonna give you some trouble. So yeah, there's not a ton of problems with these things, but you definitely have to learn a little bit on how to work on these things and get them running after they die. All right, last thing I'm gonna leave you with is remember that there's tons of different parts you can buy for these things. So over time, you can actually pay a lot of money for these things, but also you're gonna be having a lot more fun if you spend the more money to get the better bike. Like as you can see on my bike, I have a gas tank that's built right onto the bar right there. You can also buy bikes that have it built right in to this bar right here. Yeah, you can look into multiple things that will make your bike better. So if you're just gonna have fun with this, build it, have it be a huge learning experience, buy parts for it, you don't care that much about the money, go for it and buy the best parts out there. All right guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. If you have any other tips or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Also, if you're gonna buy any parts, uh, I have a gas bike affiliate link below. You can go click on my link and buy parts from there. All that's appreciated. It's the same price for you, but it supports me. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that helped you decide if you're gonna buy a motorized bike. Again, if you're gonna buy a motorized bike, go down in the description, order it through gasbike.net, my affiliate link. That helps support me and it's all free. Thanks so much, enjoy.